Hey everybody, it's Lori Crete here and I want to welcome you to the B2B show. We're doing something special and unique today. We are going live inside the Beauty Biz Club and we're also going to have a recording of this on YouTube for everyone at a later date. But I am excited to be here really because I am so thankful to have this conversation with you, Dr. Arias. So welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you being here. And I'm going to be honest, I've done this show, I think maybe you're my 120th like, uh, guest, but I felt nervous because I feel like this is such an important topic right now to, to a conversation to be having. So, you well, know, we did this the nerves can go down because, you know, we're breaking the stigma of mental health, right? So I hope to always lessen the fear of the discussion, you know, so that we can make mental health more accessible. And that's what, you know, my company is all about. So it is a scary topic, you know, because it's very sensitive, but hopefully we can lessen it and bring it more into the conversation because so many of us experience, you know, anxiety, whether it's a lot or a little bit or depression or any sort of big feelings of stressors. So Hopefully we can give some tips and tools to help today. Well, I think part of the reason I feel nervous is because it's so important to me. And that's sometimes why nerves show up. And I, I shared with you yesterday that I'm going to share something today that I've never talked about publicly before because it's real. And if we are not being open and honest, can we ever really help somebody? Exactly, exactly. And we also, by being open and honest, we open up the door to showing our real self, which is being vulnerable. Because if we put all those blockades up, it actually shuts people out. But if we open up and we are honest and open, we're vulnerability, which is the key to intimacy, right? We make ourselves more relatable and approachable. As beauty practitioners, I always say, you know, you have to show up as a professional, but you also have to understand everything we do is intimate with clients when you're touching their face, when you are, you know, in a closed dark room with their eyes are closed. There's a lot of trust and intimacy there. So, um, I, you know, we did this so quickly that I never got your bio. I never got a headshot from you. Will you actually just introduce yourself and tell a little bit of your background to our listeners? Yes, absolutely. My name is Dr. Aris. I am the founder of a mental health company. We do mental health counseling and coaching called Hey Face It. You can find us on Instagram or Facebook at Hey Face It. And we are changing the face of mental health. We allow our clients to have more access to mental health rather than just going to their therapist once a week. We have programs that help people every single day so that we can help them get better in a better mindset and frame of mind with all of the tips, tools, and strategies that we share with them. We have in-person and online counseling. Right now we are in the state of California and quickly growing, especially right now because of COVID, the need for mental health is at its peak. So we have 11 therapists that work with us and we are you know, growing and we just are partnering up with all sorts of companies right now to help with mental health support. So what is your official, what are the official initials at the end of your name? Just so everybody knows that you know your stuff. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, I have a doctorate in psychology. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. And then <laughs> I, I, I so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Everybody who works for me, as far as the clinicians, are masters and doctorate level. And it, this is something you said, it's telemedicine now. That's kind of what it's turned into rather quickly for you. Yeah, well, luckily with our company, you know, as we are always trying to go out of the box with mental health and with the times, I always was looking forward as a forward thinker to bring in HIPAA compliant, which is all about privacy online platforms to our clients. So thankfully, we were already set up pre-COVID, which a lot of therapists weren't set up for that. So we had already trained our therapists for that. We were luckily ready to step into this situation. We're just so grateful that insurance companies now are allowing telehealth, which they weren't, not all of them were before. Some of them were, but not all of them. So now luckily the telemedicine and telehealth, telemental health is much more accessible to people. So I'm really grateful for that. 
I, I know it's needed. And before we dive into that today, I'll tell you, I did a little bit of, I call it social stalking. So I went on your platforms last night. I Googled you. I want to talk about personal stuff before we dive into the, the reason that we're here today. So first of all, you're a mom of a five-year-old, right? He's six and a half. Six yeah. and a half. Yeah. Okay. Well, he literally looks, I don't know why, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong, like an old soul. I looked at him, I'm like, there's a little man trapped inside that six-year-old body. Yeah, and you have to, have you seen any of his videos, his Hey, It's Me Phoenix videos? No, you, I have not. You have to go look at them. It's because he'll see me do videos and, and talk into the camera and help people, right? And he's, my husband and I own our company together so we're constantly talking about mental health and awareness and you know we love we're activists too so he's growing up in this environment and ever since he was four years old he picked up the camera and he started talking in our phone saying hey it's me phoenix and he starts talking about things that we teach him you know and he starts wanting to talk to the world about it it's really really cute so he's he is an old soul and he's really smart you know and doesn't mean that the parenting is easy because trust me it's not I'm very open about that but yeah he is adorable well and you had said yesterday just so everybody listening knows your your business exploded you're working full-time your husband is working full-time and now you're homeschooling can you tell everybody maybe let's start there give a little bit of advice on how you have worked this out so you feel sane yeah. So at first I looked at, the, I look at the quarantine as this, like you first in the first few weeks, we were like, Oh, okay. It's going to be a couple of weeks. I can do this. I'm at home. I'm going to get my house clean, you know, and I'm feeling good. And we weren't super organized, but right away I also knew the demand. So I had to, I went right away and helping the community by going live every day, giving people free support online uh, by doing videos. I have a private Facebook group group called face it and so we were giving and we still do go um, live on giving mental health support so we were doing that diving into that i have my own private clients i own a company we are spreading online building our online platforms to be able to help wider audiences so we and my husband and i are working full time and then we have phoenix having to homeschool him. So at first it was very messy. And then we realized, of course, I walk the talk of whatever I tell my clients to do, I do it as well. So I had to schedule my day and scheduling our days is super important. So for me, doing self care, um, you know, which is getting up in the morning and moving my body for at least 30 minutes, it puts me in the right mindset for the day, making sure that I'm still meal planning and eating healthy so I don't gain the COVID-19 and also good food equals good mood. So I put myself in that mindset and then I schedule my day for when I'm working with my team or when I'm working with my clients and my husband and I stagger it out as well. And then my husband does math and I do a reading for homeschooling. So we schedule that time in the day. And then we also have to schedule like what his projects are as well. So to do art and to do exercise, we have him doing karate five days a week. So it's really about scheduling, which believe me, scheduling does not come easy for me. But I do realize that when I do it, when I do follow a schedule, I have more of a peace of mind and it helps our home run better, right? So, and also as with everything, it's progress, not perfection. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Nobody is, none of us are. So, you know, every day it's also one day at a time, but the scheduling is super important to help us have some sort of sanity during this time systems equal success and that's personal and in business right of course of course and personal first and foremost so many times as business owners we put all of our energy into our businesses but we're not putting that energy into ourselves or our relationships if we're parents we put the energy in our kids usually always for sure or we put it into our work but we have to learn that we are the vehicle that runs it all. So we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of our minds. We have to take care of our bodies in order to really be able to show up in the other areas of our lives. 
My husband and I created a, a tool called the Life Lens. And this is what we run our therapeutic model after. And we look at all of the areas of our lives, which is love, work, play, home, mind, body, soul, and give. So if one of those areas in your life isn't being nurtured or taken care of, then a lot of times the other areas of our lives fall apart. So it's really, you know, you got to look at your own self and put yourself first so that you can show up in the other areas. So is that a tool that's available in your Facebook group that you just talked yeah. about? Life yeah. Lens. Okay. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The, the life lens. Absolutely. Yeah. I give tons of stuff for free. So please feel free to join. It's needed right now. And I have to tell you that one of the things that I love that you said yesterday that I thought was so special is that you really feel for the beauty industry right now. And that's why I have you here today. Like we got to help these people transition back into what is probably going to be a new normal, right? I think one of the first people I texted was my hairdresser. <laughs> You know, we have such a close connection to people who help us in the beauty industry, whether it's our facialist or a person giving us massages or our hairdressers, like we feel connected. You guys are our therapists too. Exactly. <laughs> and we share everything with you, even though you don't have the degrees that I have, but people do see you as that, you know, trainers as well, right? So in the beauty industry, we're sharing it all with you because we also bring our vulnerabilities to you because we're coming to you to help us feel more beauty on the outside as well. Even if we're hurting on the inside, we're like, we go to the beauty to help try and fix that as a certain level as well. But I, email i texted my hairdresser because i of course i haven't seen her in months and i actually had an appointment that i needed to schedule before quarantine happened so i'm like months off but anyways i was worried about her because a financially how is she going to get by with this which is so scary you know and then b is she putting herself at risk by still helping people so of course i jumped in i was like oh my god you got to do these things online why don't you make me a beauty kit and then i'll do a zoom call with you and you can kind of talk me through doing my own highlights because my roots are horrible you know whatever i can do to help but i feel for for her i feel for you guys and nail salons too i mean all of it you know it's like i my heart strings go out to you because it's a really scary time. It's been, a, I call it a, a roller coaster of hope and despair, hope and despair. And, and in my entire industry was stripped of their way to make money, of their livelihood, their income. And now there's two things that I, so we've kind of dealt with that. I feel like we've processed it, we're finding new ways, but now it's getting to be, for some of us going back to work in other states, and some of us looking to go back to work. So there's two things I want to talk about that I think you could help us with today. How do we transition, first of all, back to work without fear and anxiety? And then how do we handle those clients that are going to come out into our rooms, lay down, and they're so emotional? And we really don't have the tools or the education. And, and this is what I will share with my audience that I shared with you yesterday. This stuff is real. I had somebody who was a client of mine in the beauty world reach out to me and ask for help. And I thought she meant business help. And the next day she killed her daughter and committed suicide. And I think about it every day and I feel horrible. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot going on with people right now. So let's talk first about how to ourselves get ready to go back mentally and how to stay sane and how to try to overcome that fear. And then let's talk about how to deal with our clients. So we don't come home feeling like we're going to have a nervous breakdown. So I think that we have to start with the self care, like I was just talking, right? I think we have you, you need to set up a routine for self care self-care comes number one and especially when you're living in an in when you work in an industry you have such a heart to take care of other people that many times their needs become first and foremost before your own needs you know and then that when you continue to do that and you're not taking care of yourself that puts you into distress and distress then births stress and anxiety and all sorts of uncomfortable feelings and emotions that you would be experiencing. 
So you do need to set up a routine for yourself of self care before even going back to work. You know, in the airplane, they always say, put your life, your, your mask, uh, your breathing thing over your face before any, you know, your children even. So you've got to do that yourself as well. Right. So I would set up a self care routine. Like I had just touched touched on. I would get up in the morning. I would move your body. And this doesn't mean you have to do hardcore exercise or anything. There's lots of free things you can even do online at home. I mean, I have a workout studio at home. First thing I do to clear my mind is to move my body for at least 30 minutes, even if I don't want to, because it puts me in a good headspace and it sets up the precedent for the rest of the day because I'm taking care of myself. Right? So I think that just setting that up for yourself and some sort of structure for self care can then put you in that mindset and going forward. Now, I also think that you need to set up boundaries with your clients before they walk in your space. And you can do that by sending them a lovely email beforehand. So I would go ahead and set up an email before you even start allowing them in. I know that my dermatologist did that and I really respected that because he set up his boundaries in offering these times that people can start setting up. But he had set very clearly in there that they're staggering out appointments. So you probably want to stagger out your appointments more to keep yourself safe. But you're also letting them know you want to keep yourself safe. And you also want to keep other people safe as well. Right. And safety should come first right now, because by doing that, um, you are setting yourself up to feel better about this situation. So I would set your appointments and stagger them out more by not having a lot of people come into your space. And then, of course, let them know that you are going to be wearing a mask for precautions to keep yourself protected and your future clients that are coming through the doors protected. And you ask that of them, too. Now, I think you guys do facials, so probably the patient patients will take off um, the masks when they're laying down and you'll let them know that you're doing that. But maybe you want to protect yourself. They have got these cute little shields that some even yoga people have, you know, these yoga companies, I've seen these really cute shields that you can even put over your face to protect yourself. I mean, to me, I always look at uh, prepare myself more to keep myself safe. Let them know that you're gonna be wearing gloves and a shield, possibly a mask. You don't wanna get anything in your eyes because really we don't know. The facts aren't there. We wanna follow science. We don't wanna follow fear, but we do wanna follow science and know what's happening out there. You know, and of course, at the same time, I understand you need to make money, you need to pay the bills, you need to do what you need to do, but at the same time, organize it differently so that you are better safe than sorry. So I would definitely do the self-care routine, send an email to your clients, letting them know that these are the boundaries and the structure happening. Then I also su suggest that you let them know that this time is going to be more of a spa experience that you love talking to them. You want to hear all of their stories, you know, and sharing everything that's going on. You love the relationship you have with them. But for right now, you're going to share, you're going to keep the limit to sharing for another time. So right now you're going to have some pretty spa music go on and allow this time for them to really be about their self care, that they're going to come to you and just have a time of peace and quiet, and that you're not going to be engaging much in conversation, even though your heart wants to, because you're such a caring person, and you really want to listen to their all everything. But right now, you can't do that, right? Um, and so I would definitely just set those kind of boundaries and allow it to be just music time, you know, and and in order for you to set those boundaries, you want to set those boundaries. And you also want to know that you want to follow through with those boundaries that you're setting with your clients, because so many times we feel bad, you know, because we want to take care of others. But right now you need to take care of yourself because you want to keep your business going and you want to protect also the future people that are coming in the space. So these boundaries are for you and for them. So in knowing that, just let them know beforehand. And then 
have a sign up maybe on your door when they walk in to let them know the guidelines as well as a reminder. I, you know, you're speaking my language because I just want to give an example. During the failing economy back in 2007 and eight, we had a rule in my spa. Employees, staff, renters, and clients were not allowed to talk about the failing economy. And um, people would leave and go, I don't know what you did, but I feel so good. So it was removing what they had been so exposed to and creating a new positive experience for somebody. And that can really help your business grow tremendously, just creating a different space for somebody. I just had an idea also. I love that. And I love that you did that. And that's a really good boundary to set. I think everybody should set that. You know, we don't need to be talking. We're coming in to see our beauty person for relaxation and self-care. So we don't need to bring our anxieties and stressors to the into the room right now. Right now, let's have it for a time of relaxation. There are also these wonderful meditation apps that you can put into your space from calm to insight timer, or even on um, I, you know, any of iTunes or Pandora or Amazon music, they have spa music, of course you can play. But if maybe if you wanna give the clients a choice to listen to a certain anxiety, you know, meditation or whatever they're experiencing, let them pick a meditation from one of these apps that they can listen to during that time. There are so many great lessons and courses that people could pick and listen to and enjoy while they're going through uh, your spa experience that you're creating for them. That's a really, really good idea. And and for you guys listening, this is, I, it was just being a leader. All I would say is if it would start to talk about the economy, let's shelf that for now. I want to talk about something positive during this time, but I will tell you, my best friend went to the dentist this week and they said, if you have to talk, raise your hand because they did not. So it's really for your health. You're, you know, you're not just your mental health, but seriously, this is a virus. So maybe you could even kindly express that to clients. I would you know, actually, for our safety. I would put that in the boundaries. I yeah. would put in the email. These are the guidelines. When we um, had our offices still open, we weren't sure that we were going to be closing them. Of course, we are all online right now. But we basically had all of these guidelines typed out in bullet points so they knew what the guidelines were. And so I suggest putting that in there as that and let them know that you're going to let them have the opportunity to pick one of these meditations to listen to. And so it will give them something to look forward to because you're offering them the solution. The more we put on the solutions, the bigger the solutions get. The more we focus on the problems, the bigger the problems get. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a solution focused therapist. So the more we focus on the solutions, the bigger the solutions get. The more we focus on the problems, the bigger the problems get. So when we have conversations around the problems, the problems continue to grow around us. Now, this trust me doesn't mean that I hide my head in the sand because I am very much so an information junkie. I love doing research. I love knowing what's happening in the world. I am not a denial seeker. I do not hide my head in the sand, but it does not mean that in these types of situations that we're going into, that it needs to be a constant conversation. So walking into a spa experience, I want a spa experience. And so now you all are gonna be creating a spa experience for your clients and it's something for them to look forward to. So you're actually sharing with them the experience now that they're gonna be having and you're letting them know that beforehand. Right. So you're just setting the guidelines beforehand and saying, wow, this is what you get to have coming into my space. Can you tell me from your background if this is true and why it's true? So when you send out these guidelines and you have these boundaries, it creates an emotional trust or an emotional confidence to visit your business. Right. Will you talk about that a little bit? It gives me safety. I feel safe because boundaries we people as much as they don't like you setting boundaries many times because it might push their buttons, it actually gives us safety. It makes us feel safe. It makes us know what the structure is and what we're walking into. And especially right now, because there's so much unknown in the world, there's so much uncertainty in the world that it just shows me that you've put time, energy, and effort into 
putting this together for me and to putting this structure together for me. So it makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like you actually know what's going on in the world and you're putting these safeties and these precautions into place and that you've put that extra effort into it. It makes me feel safe walking into your space. So when I got that letter from my dermatologist, even though I haven't set up an appointment yet, at least I know that, wow, he is letting me know that they're cleaning down the space after every single client, that they're only allowing one person come into the building and that one person will come and meet me downstairs wearing a mask, that a mask is required for me, that we will go up into the elevator together, that I'm going to be guided into the room, that we're not going to have any conversations, the conversation's going to be limited, that everybody's going to be wearing a mask and gloves. And that once I leave, they're gonna wipe down the space for the next person to come in and that they're taking care of the staff, me as a client, as well as the future clients coming in. Knowing that he has that system in place makes me feel safe-er going there rather than them not acknowledging it and what was happening in the world, right? So at least they are keeping, you know, keeping me safe. I love that you said, and I never heard this before. You're, did you say you're not a denial seeker? No. <laughs> I don't want to hide my head in the sand. <laughs> so I am. I mean, my company is called Face It. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good tagline. I am not a denial seeker. So I, I'm curious, and then I want to ask you some fun questions before we go too. I'm curious about. I shared with you my experience. So. Not only did I have somebody reach out to me and then that happened, as I mentioned earlier, but I also had an employee at my staff who committed suicide. And I feel like because I consider myself to be a well-balanced person, I'm clueless when somebody comes to me and they're having problems, right? We associate maybe our problems with somebody else's or how do we know if a client comes to us and says something that needs to be paid attention to and where do we send them? Like, can you give me some tips on maybe how I can pick up what somebody is putting down and be of help and of service to them? Well, anytime somebody's share, I mean, when you spoke to these clients, they reached out for help, right? They were saying they're scared, they're sad, they're depressed. So if you do have any clients expressing any sort of mental health issues, I would just be rather safe than sorry. So you can give them a few resources. Number one, there is a free suicide hotline that you can give to anybody. So that's 1-800-273-TALK. T-A-L-K. So it's 1-800-273-TALK. And there's also psychologytoday.com. So what I suggest doing is, and even if you want to put this in your email beforehand, or if you want to do little cards that you can pass out to people with it handwritten or however you want to do it, let them know that there are so many resources out there right now with people who are able to help and so give them that card, give them psychology.com today. All you do on psychology.com, psychologytoday.com is put in your zip code, put in the insurance that you are using, that you wanna use your insurance for mental health. And there is somebody in your area that will be able to support you. And thankfully now there are many people that will do it online so that you're giving them the help and support say, oh my gosh, I care about you. I'm so sorry you're feeling this way. Of course, I'm not equipped to help you, but I do have these resources for you to call. Will you please call them? And then if you have any questions as well, you can call that 1-800 number and let the, one of the counselors know that you just experienced a client sharing this information with you. Do they have any advice for you? And they'll give it to you. And then you can share that with your client as well. I feel like that was such a helpful bit of information, seriously, because it's something I think about all the time. And I feel like moving forward, like you said, people share with us as their beauty practitioners, we need these tools and, yeah. um, and nobody, nobody's talking about it. So I want to circle back. If I am an esthetician going to work and I feel anxiety ridden, what I heard you say is practice self-care. Mm -hmm. get up earlier, do something that makes you feel good at the beginning of the day. Yeah. And then I also have another thing that I have people do is I call it a mind dump. 
which is especially if I'm feeling anxiety. And if you do feel anxious, please join my Face It group because we have these resources for free in there. But I do a mind dump first thing in the morning, which is I just journal all of my thoughts. It's a stream of consciousness. I put it down on paper and I just let these thoughts go and put it down on paper. You know, your thought, you are not your thoughts, especially if you are anxious. You know, these are just the, the anxiety is just information that is being given to you right now for you to check in with yourself. Right. So you are not these anxious thoughts. Now, of course, if it's situational because of the global pandemic, then, of course, all of these boundaries and the self-care is going to put you in a better state of mind because you're organized and you're scheduling and care for yourself so that you can care for others. Right. But if you really are feeling anxiety, make sure that you are doing what you need to do so that you don't put yourself in a compromising position, right? You want to listen to yourself, but feelings are not facts. So make sure that you're discerning what the thoughts that are going in, in and on your mind, right? So I do a mind dump first thing in the morning where I just dump my mind and write down all of those thoughts and make sure that I eat healthy throughout the day because good food equals good mood. There's a mind, science is showing and research is showing there's a mind um, gut relationship. There's a direct correlation with the mind and gut. So we want to make sure that we're keeping ourselves healthy. We want to move our body at least 30 minutes a day, even if we don't want to. And that's just taking a walk. You can exercise more if you want to, but just move it. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of water and, you know, making sure that you're getting all of your psychological needs met so that you're in a good place. And once you're in a good place, you'll be able to serve others and help others as well. Energy is contagious. So you're right. I used to be a flight attendant. I teach use your oxygen mask first all the time. <laughs> I've also started talking about what we're going to experience stepping back into a new norm is very similar to jet lag. So I'm calling it lockdown lag. Think you're going to feel disoriented at first, right? You so, do. We were yeah. We wrote our, um, a blog about this yesterday. It's like, okay, so I've been looking forward to getting out and about. I've been looking forward to this for months and now I'm allowed to go out and about a little bit in moderation and I'm scared to, what if I'm not ready? Right. I can't even drive anymore. I hit the curb yesterday going to Starbucks. It's like, I feel like I'm starting over again in a lot of ways. You really are. And I mean, I don't know if you experience this, but even when I go to the grocery store, it's like, you know, you're going in, you have your mask on, you have your gloves, you're taking all the precautions because you want to keep yourself safe. And you like start looking at people like they're contagious, right? So we're going to have to acclimate ourselves back into, you know, relationships and getting in the world and being a part of a community without, you know, it's like we have the social distancing is going to be a whole new level of work that we're going to have to do globally as we yeah. have to go back in. But, you know, we don't even know what's happening. So I don't know when that's going to happen, how that's going to happen. I think that the first and foremost is you just need to be keeping yourself safe. And of course, you and I, we live in California, so it's a um, whole new whole different level because we're not really even back in the world. Uh, no, not yeah. at all. Right. I, it, it is. It's a whole new and it's just slow. I just say have grace with yourself, you know, be, allow yourself to feel whatever you feel for sure. So and we, I wanna, have to feel them. we have to feel our feelings. And this is really important when it comes to mental health and with all of our programs. It's one of the number one things we talk about, because when you avoid it, when you stuff your feelings, they start boiling up and become bigger. And when we avoid them and stuff them down, that's when full blown anxiety happens. That's when panic attacks can start happening, right? So you definitely want to express your feelings that you don't want your feelings to rule your life. Right. But you definitely want to find a constructive way to express them and work with them and see what information these feelings are giving you for your own internal growth. Well, as we move forward, you guys listening in, if you want to ask questions, type them in now, because I think you're on a bit of a delay compared to us. And I want to ask you some personal questions, if you're okay with that. Of course. I mean, I've okay. been on that 
I don't know if you saw, um, I've been on national TV. I share my stuff. Well, I was totally, that's what I was going to ask you. But first of all, I wanted to ask, do you actually meditate? Yes, I do. I actually meditate, but I don't, I, so how do I meditate? I meditate. I put on the insight timer app every single day. And I listen to meditation music with my son. When I put him to bed every single day, it's setting him up to be able to practice mindfulness when he's older. So we do our little meditation together every single night. I also do yoga. So for me, that's practicing mindfulness. And so for me, I let, I like for people to choose what sort of mindfulness they like to do. So it's being present in the here and now. So it doesn't necessarily always mean that we have to sit here and be all ohm and close our eyes. You know, it's more about setting ourselves still, taking deep breaths and being present in the here and now. So you have to see what works for you. So I think that there's lots of different ways that we can practice mindfulness, but science definitely shows that the more you do practice mindfulness, the better headspace you'll be in. It sounds like your meditation is a form of soothing your soul, maybe it just really and just being present. I think it is really about being in the here and now. So being mindful, knowing exactly what's right in front of me right now and being present. I have started just every morning. I have one of those jade mats and I lay on that and turn on whatever YouTube five minute meditation comes on. That's what I listen to because it was meant for me that day. That's my form of. I love it. Morning meditation. I love it. So I wanted to ask you because I did see when I social stalked you yesterday, the whole, um, Bravo TV show. I want to know what is it like being on a reality show and what did you learn from that experience? So I, that is a very loaded question. <laughs> you can be honest I'm here. I'm allowed to say and not allowed to say. <laughs> But what I can express is that even though it is difficult to be on a reality TV show because they set situations up, um, I can say that even because it was a pretty difficult experience, I find gratitude in it. So through difficult times, I can find gratitude. And of course, you know, I found I did the show because I wanted to let people know that therapists are humans, too. And that we also work through our own issues, you know, so on that show, um, it was before I had my son and my husband and I shared that we weren't on the same page as far as timing was when we were going to have a baby. I got pregnant when I was 39. And so we, you know, waited and waited. And then actually right during the filming, right when the filming was over, when it was when I got pregnant, which was crazy. Um, so that was part of the experience. And then also um, I shared about my own body image issues, my own anxiety issues that I felt about myself and I got to work that work through a lot of that live on the show, which was really nice. And then of course, you know, my business got to stem from there. I got to grow from it. You know, I really just put me in this great position where I can help people on a larger scale, which was always my intention behind it. So being able to make mental health more accessible, but also just realizing therapists are humans too. And very many times we're put as like these godlike creatures, but we're not. We're just humans, just like you. How did they find you for the show? On psychologytoday.com. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm also an author. I wrote a book called Breakup Emergency, a guide to transform your breakup into a breakthrough. And I had done some TV work before, but the actual producer from Bravo um, found me on Psychology Today. And then I want to ask you, and this is not personal with you, but I, I meant to ask you this earlier. If you're at home right now and you want to strangle your husband or your significant other, what is the best thing to do right away to diffuse the situation? Because we're all shoved in a home with, you know, high levels of stress. How do you diffuse the family situation? Yeah. You know, and this is what I say with couples all the time is like, okay, first of all, let's just back up. Like, of course, you're going to want to strangle your family. You don't think I've gone through that or don't go through that every <laughs> even being an author of relationship books. Come on, we're human. Like, it's not natural for us to be stuck together. 
for this many days and this long right. a time. We we're like that anyway. You know, we want to strangle each other. You know, I'm saying that lately, not seriously, you know, but of right. course, get frustrated and angry and have all sorts of feelings. And divorce is on the rise as well as pregnancy um, during this time. So I always say when things get heated, take five. So step away. All right. Because it, it's important. I, I have a whole video in my group about this actually reacting versus responding. So if you join the group, we can, you can look at that as well. Reacting versus responding. So we want to respond versus react when conflict arises. So how do we do that? We take five minutes. So when, when there's conflict there, I'm going to say, I love you. I got to step away right now because the reactions are just going to get me in a bad place. And trust me, I'm one, I'm a very reactionary person. <laughs> so it's good to step away. And then I'm going to take at least five breaths, take five, take five minutes, take a walk around your block five times, um, at least five minutes to step away to kind of lessen the conflict so that I can come back and actually have a better conversation with my spouse. And if you need longer than five minutes, then take longer than five minutes, take an hour, take two hours, take the night where you can kind of calm your body down and then have the conversation. But with this scheduling that I talked about earlier, you need to schedule time alone. You need alone time. You cannot be so enmeshed with these other humans in your house 24 seven without some of your own space. It's not healthy. So you might one of the things I am the most grateful for is this is my she shed. It's my casita and it's just looks like a spa room and I can spend half the day in here. So it's been a saving grace for sure. You're right. We are not supposed to be attached at the hip. No, we're not at all. I mean, I have my own office, which is a separate building too. And it's now been taken over as a karate space and a gym. And so I'm kicked out of there half the time by my husband and kid, but it's like, it's okay. Cause we have it scheduled. So for me, I get my alone time. I get up in the morning before anybody in my house and I go into my office, my she shed, um, and spend a couple of hours in there and then get my workout in and do my journaling and get my mind in the right place for setting up my day. And my husband, he does that at night. So he uh, gets perfect night where he takes it because he's more of a night owl than I am. He watches his movies, he plays drums, he does his thing, you know? And so it's like setting those boundaries. It's when I put Phoenix to bed last night, he's like, mom, stay longer, spend the night with me, spend the night in my bed. I'm like, dude, I need a break. Like <laughs> I'm not made for 24 seven. Like you've been with me every single day now for months. So I need space too. And I set those boundaries, you know, that I need my alone time so that I can fuel myself. Um, so don't take also like when you guys have arguments, like don't take it so seriously. <laughs> also, like give each other a little slack. We're just all humans trying to get through and know that your spouse is having all sorts of feelings that you might not be experiencing because we all do process things differently. So you have to understand who your partner is and who you are and what your psychological needs are. Because I know mine are completely different than my husband's are, right? So you have to be a little aware and just give each other a little slack. And again, progress, not perfection. I'm taking notes. This is what Jay yeah. and I my significant, are going to talk about over happy hour tonight. Slack. Yeah. 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 Yes. Reacting, not responding. I do. Um, we actually have this personality test that we do. It's called the process communication model. And it breaks people down into six different personality types. Thinker, persister, harmonizer, rebel, imaginer, and promoter. And so people take this personality test when it's a program that I do. And um, you learn what how you view the world and you also learn what your personal psychological needs are. And then you also learn what happens to you when you get in distress and 
what you need, what your psychological needs are to get yourself out of distress. And so it's a great tool for couples to use. It's not only like getting so much insight into your own self, but also for couples learning to communicate to each other differently, right? Because your my husband is a different personality type than I am. So I have to communicate to him, not in the same way that I need to be communicated to and vice versa. So we learn how to do that. It's like communication is such a skill. And no matter how you do communicate, it is something that we need to practice in relationships because we all have different needs and we have to be aware of our spouse's needs when it comes to communicating, not just our own, right? I think even with you saying this, and I would love to take that test. Jay and I have gotten close, like closer over this. It's really, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know it. I've been with him for 12 years and his love language is an act of service. I had no idea until all this happened. Yeah. So we should be learning about each other. But this test would also be incredible for any of you guys that own a business for your staff, like being aware of how to help them transition back into our it new is. world. It is. We, I actually do do the trainings for companies. I'm doing one for a huge Hollywood company next week um, with their 29 employees. But it is good. We do it with our employees because, you know, everybody stresses differently. And so how we communicate to our staff is super important because they all have different psychological needs. Um, it's great for learning your child, too. Even though children can't take the test, you get insight from this knowledge and how to communicate to your child as well. So it lessens conflict, it lessens the miscommunication and actually allows effective communication to happen. And it also can help motivate your team to be better employees as well and how you communicate with them. Awesome, I'm gonna talk to you about that because I'm teaching a class hopefully in September um, and I would love to make that part of it here yeah. in the desert. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to you and you can tell me how to. I don't believe in like quick fixes ever, but let me tell you, this test is like the key to faster self-knowledge of any psychological test I have ever taken. And trust me, like, you know, I have a doctorate in psychology, so I know all of them. You know, people are always like, oh, before they take this, they're always like, oh, how about Enneagram? How about, you know, Myers-Briggs? And then they take this, they're like, oh my God, this is mind blowing. It's so deep and every single person is different. So everyone gets a packet of their own little personal booklet of like 30 pages of breaking your personality structure down. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And it's really helpful to know like what happens to me when I get in distress, because we all do like whenever we have miscommunication from whomever, you know, we get into distress. If you have a client who's showing up late and you know that you have another client showing up, it automatically puts you into distress. And so it tells you what happens to you and what you need to help yourself to get out of distress. Okay, well, we have like 500,000 downloads of this podcast. If you don't tell people where they can find this, you're going to be bombarded with the emails. So is there a place where people can find the test? Yeah, it's actually, you have to take the course. We have like a mini course that you can take. I've made it. Of course, you know, I shared with you, like my mental health company makes mental health super accessible for people. So all you have to do is go to heyfaceit.com and you can send us an email. I have an amazing staff that you can ask. They will set you up. Um, you can press the communication course. We'll give you the information. It's not one of these, like, I can take it online and it's a cookie cutter kind of thing. It's actually really personalized, but I still make it accessible because that's my goal in life, you know, to make mental health accessible. So just go to heyfaceit.com. You can also go to Dr. Eris. Dr. Eris is spelled out.com and you can send us an email. That's fine. We got a team of people that will help you and we'll connect you up. Super easy, awesome. very okay. easy. Exciting, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna make Jay take it too. So everyone is saying this is great and I don't see a lot of questions coming in because you're such a good communicator. I, oh, I see you. one that says, do you think we'll finally start seeing more support for mental health as a result of the 
craziness we're and living in. We have, and we have, which is so amazing. I am so grateful for it. You know, that's why you want to make sure that you find therapists who are able to um, do everything online. You can also call my company. We we do. Men the thing is, we have a lot of laws which by the way, I'm doing a change.org on this, um, that do not allow therapists to go across, across state lines. But we, so we are in the state of California. So if you live in the state of California and you need mental health support or you wanna guide anybody to mental health support, please pass them along to us. We accept most insurances. So you're good there. And um, we have, we, we do therapy differently we have all these extra resources that is different than most therapists do because I believe in more support rather than just 45 minutes a week. I want you to get better faster. That's why we add the communication course. That's why we add all of these things to our programs. We have anxiety programs, depression, body image, all of these groups to help people get the extra support that they need. Um, but if you don't live in the state of California and you still want our support, we do do mental health coaching, which you can do across state lines, but the coaching will still be with a master's level person. So we're not just a bunch of coaches who have read some books, you know, out there, like we actually have master's and doctorate degrees. So absolutely, it is more accessible and we're making it more and more accessible every day. So please, you know, make sure that you yourself know that the support is out there and with online help now i mean it's even more out there which is amazing so i know you have another podcast that you have to go to today but before we go i want to thank you so much i'm just hearing and i know my my listeners are going to agree with me somebody talk so confidently about it and share so up openly makes me feel a little lighter it not so nervous to go back to work Right. So that's what we were just saying earlier is like, I don't want it to be nervous. I want you to feel better. Right. And so you can feel better, but self care and being in a good headspace is what will help do that. So you have to do that. You have to put yourself first. You need to follow through with these things in order to feel that way. So, and, and keep your staff safe. There's so much that we can do online, including, I'm sure you, Lori, have shared with everybody, like create your own kits, sell yeah. it to your clients with your own special formula that only you sell and have them come pick it up and do a special Zoom call where you can also have deeper conversations because you're not stuck in the office and give them everything they need. And the, you know, our world is, as a business owner, our world is shifting. So we have to shift along with it. You know, we, are, <laughs> we can't fight it, we get to go with it. And so it is an exciting time for that as well. So, I wish you all the best of luck and thank you for coming on this call and let me know how I can help or if you have any questions and please follow us and you know we're here for you. Join my group. Just one more shout out of your website and your Facebook group so they can easily find you. So our website and everything social for my company is Hey Face It, H-E-Y Face It at on Facebook and Instagram. And we have a private Facebook group. It's face it. I don't know if you go on our Instagram, we'll have a link to it. Make sure you answer the three questions because we do not just let anybody in because people do share a lot of private information when it comes to mental health. So we monitor it very closely. Um, so that's where you can find us. You can also find me at Dr. Aris on um, social media, D-R-E-R-I-S. And um, my website is doctor spelled out, eris.com. And yeah, it's all there, very easy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I am going to email you because I do need some information from you, the headshot and the bio and all that stuff to send off to the producer. And I'm going to send you one of, one of the things I'm the most proud of is I just stopped when all this happened and I thought, how can I help my industry remain workable right now? And I created a virtual facial certification for everyone. So I would like to gift you a virtual facial. So I need your mailing address to do that too. Yes, that's <laughs> amazing. I love good skin. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Eric. It was lovely chatting with you. And we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Bye.